Hi everyone, I'm Pooja and I create videos on all the things I wish I knew and all the things I've learned in my late teens and early 20s. The topic for today is my Warren MBA essays. For context, I apply to MBA programs in the summer of 2017 for the September 2017 deadline. I applied to three schools. I applied to Stanford, Harvard, and a dual degree at Warren Lauder. I ended up getting into Warren Lauder, Stanford, and I was rejected from Harvard. So today I'm going to narrate three of the essays that I wrote for Warren. Uh, two of them are for the Warren MBA program and one of them is for the Lauder program. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Teamwork is at the core of the Wharton MBA experience with each student contributing unique elements to our collaborative culture. How will you contribute to the Wharton community? It was now 11, 12 p.m. Since 7 a.m. I had been chopping vegetables alongside Dr. Kamath, our 70-year-old camp president. Together we were serving five meals a day for 148 campers and staff. I had returned to my volunteer-led childhood summer camp after graduating through the ranks, once even serving as director. For years, my summer days commenced with the sonorous echoes of a conch, signaling the beginning of morning meditation. Afternoon philosophy classes examining principles of karma and the existence of God were followed by more traditional camp activities, color wars and talent shows. And now working behind the scenes, I saw the countless invisible hands that were instrumental in creating my cherished childhood memories and friendships. From registration and facility maintenance to accounting and curriculum development, there were hundreds of hours of labor that I never knew occurred. Volunteers who had no responsibility towards me chose to make my needs their priority every summer for eight years. I started to understand the effect of their service in my life. In those weeks, I was a DJ, plumber, hairstylist, chef, many jobs that I was completely unqualified for. Emboldened by a simple desire to make myself useful, I became willing to do whatever was needed to create the intensely colorful environment that I remembered so vividly from my own childhood. Over the next seven years, I came back to camp seamlessly weaving through a variety of different roles managing kitchen operations, running staff leadership training, assembling medical information, all committed to preserving its legacy as our older board of trustees started to step away. Through my decades-long commitment to this nonprofit organization, I became aware of what words like passion and problem solver meant, traits that I will bring to the Wharton community. At Wharton, I will once again commit myself to, com to my community, and I'm eager to bring my impassioned energy to Wharton student life. Whether I'm engaging in a spirited tug of war in the Cluster Olympics or serving on my Cluster Council, I'm eager to build class camaraderie. Meantime, I hope to bring my passion for meditation and yoga to Wharton as part of the Yoga and Wellness Club, possibly even organizing events that teach mindfulness practices to my fellow students. And while I'm an energetic person, I definitely enjoy unwinding. I love to act and dance and would join the Wharton Follies in the dance studio to relax at the end of long weeks and establish enduring friendships. So that was essay one. And essay two is what do you hope to gain professionally from the Wharton MBA? Being at the forefront of artificial intelligence in developing economies, I have had a unique vantage point to understand its potential to transform the world. I, IBM's AI applications were understandably commercial, which limited my ability to harness the technology to drive broad societal impact. To me, AI was like electricity only being used to power an electrical socket, when it had the ability to, and power to light up a nation. I can imagine applying AI to satellite imagery to build a dynamic atlas that determines rates of deforestation or conducts long-term food forecasting. I want to deploy AI to governmental and humanitarian leaders, striving to solve the world's most pressing international development problems, specifically within the South Asian diaspora. At IBM, the most effective leaders I saw manage in innovation globally had an interdisciplinary skill set, complemented by a vision deeply grounded in technological and regional knowledge. Via the Lauder Institute, I would gain regional expertise critical for affecting international development. Meantime, through the traditional Wharton MBA, I would cultivate the interdisciplinary skills to be a true champion for my vision. 
With my, inter in, with my interdisciplinary approach, I would take a range of courses, including Professor Kapoor's technology strategy to learn how established technology firms can navigate the changing industry landscape. I would engage in Professor Henny's, I think that's how you say it, corporate diplomacy course and Professor Diamond's negotiations class to learn concrete methods to identify common ground in contentious global scenarios. Taking advantage of the program's flexibility, I would cultivate my vision and deepen my technological expertise by studying in the School of Engineering to learn under assistant professor and AI thought leader Eric Eaton and study artificial intelligence and machine learning run by the GRASP Laboratory. Further, seeking exposure to the most innovative AI companies and the best minds in the industry, I would spend a semester at Wharton's San Francisco campus. Beyond academics, I'm eager to collaborate with my Wharton peers in the Social Impact Club to adapt their perspectives on how to leverage AI to tackle the world's most pressing social challenges. I would make use of the leadership workshops and intensives, as well as the executive coaching and feedback program to better understand team formation and dynamics. I would join in the India Economic Forum, leveraging my Indian heritage while exploring the South Asian diaspora from an economic perspective. And I would take advantage of leadership ventures like Antarctica or the Atacama Desert Treks, which would help me navigate uncertainty, but also would just be an incredible opportunity to bond with fascinating peers from around the world. <laughs> Warren and Lauder's combined offerings would empower me with the necessary blend of skills to achieve both my long-term and short-term professional goals. Short-term, I intend to work for companies like Kensho, Orbital Insights, or Descartes Labs, companies dedicated to using AI to address international development problems. Long-term, I aspire to head global strategy for an emerging technology or AI company dedicated to social impact. I believe a Wharton Lauder joint education would be a critical partner in my journey to pioneer the future of AI. That's a lot. That's my second essay. Third essay. It's discuss why you're applying to the Lauder program, detail specific reasons for applying to your chosen program of concentration, and describing how you see yourself benefiting from and contributing to the Lauder program overall. For those of you that don't know, you have to choose a specific geo um, out of their selection of geos that they offer. And so I chose South Asia, Middle East, North Africa, which was very much in tune with my application process because I worked in that region and I'm of South Asian descent. I also, in my program, had to show fluency in it as well. So here's my essay. After successfully building a market for Watson artificial intelligence in Africa and Turkey, I embraced my next expedition. I joined the team leading Watson's first joint venture with the Sovereign Investment Fund of the United Arab Emirates. I was emboldened as the ruling Sheikh identified Watson as an avenue to diversify the nation's oil-based economy. But upon arrival, I found a leader facing serious challenges. Our general manager in Abu Dhabi was a local individual leading a team of 11 IBM veterans, though he had no experience with IBM and Watson. Quickly assessing the situation, I saw he was overwhelmed and volunteered to complete whatever he needed help with, creating presentations, educating him on Watson, driving team meetings, and more. But our GM still lacked trust and rapport with the team, so I attempted to help him build morale across the organization. I launched a series of team lunches and dinners, learned to sail and golf just to bond with team, team partners. Unfortunately, my efforts to magic manage up and lead a mid-crisis proved futile, and the GM was ultimately removed. After 10 months, I found myself reflecting on why my team experienced professional success in Africa and Turkey, yet disappointment in the Middle East. I observed a stark contrast between the leaders of each region in their ability to manage innovation with an international team. Having a local GM in Abu Dhabi was an undeniable necessity because business relationships were hev heavily influenced by the nation's tribal heritage. Although the GM certainly had regional expertise, he failed to manage an American team and contextualize US developed Watson capabilities for the specific region. In contrast, my manager in Africa and Turkey had deep technological expertise and a vision that was grounded in regional comprehension. In both cases, we had the tools to succeed, but in one case, management possessed the skills to make it happen. Pioneering the forefront of AI, 
I saw incredible untapped potential in the technology and gained a broader vision for how it can transform the world. I want to deploy AI to governmental and humanitarian leaders striving to solve the most pressing international development problems, specifically within the Middle East, North Africa, and South Asia. Informed by my experiences visiting and working in this region, I know I cannot nurture my vision effectively without further immersing myself in the political, economic, and his historical and cultural heritage. In its ec political, economic, historical, and cultural heritage. I have a personal affinity for South Asia, Middle East, and North Africa because of my South Asian heritage and my passionate desire to work in India in the future. Being first generation, I'm deeply connected to the culture, traveling there since I was eight years old and actively studying Hindi to communicate with my grandparents. I've watched India evolve rapidly since 2014 under its new Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He is one of the most polarizing and fascinating leaders of our time, constantly shaking up society with game-changing initiatives demonetization of currency to eradicate the black market, cleaning up India to rebrand it for tourism, and beseeching the South Asian di diaspora globally to increase foreign, di in foreign investment in India. I'm inspired by the changes I've witnessed and seek to help write the nation's narrative by leveraging AI technology. Through the Lauder MA, I seek to amplify my business education. Business in India, similar to the Middle East and North Africa, is intertwined in history, culture, and politics. I'm eager to dive into the Middle Eastern and South Asian history to uncover how Indians, India's colonial past affects its present day economy. Mastering Hindi will make me most effective in my mission by giving me foundation to interact across communities in India, not just the affluent English speaking ones. I'm eager for the opportunity to deeply engage with India and the broader region to gain the academic and experiential insight crucial to making a transformation, making me a transformation pioneer for AI globally. Meantime, I come to the Lauder MA prepared to contribute my experience and energy to the program. As part of IBM Watson, I delivered AI technology in MENA for two and a half years and have worked with high-level governmental and business officials across healthcare, technology, financial services, and transportation industries. At Lauder, I would hopefully inform discussions in classes as diverse as global studies and ethics and international political economy. I would bring a perspective on the UAE's economic diversification partnerships to conferences like Wharton MENA Conference and Wharton Technology Conferences. Moreover, as a young female professional, I was well aware of the challenges working in the MENA region and I could help my female colleagues prepare to be culturally successful in, the future, in future roles while staying true to personal values. I wish to share both my personal and professional experiences, recognizing that my 70 classmates will truly create a remarkable world of learning. Wow, that was a lot. <laughs> but those were the three essays that I wrote. Um, of course, essays are just one piece of what my overall application was, and I'll likely do a video uh, that breaks down the full application for you to see how the full Wharton application came together to get me a seat into that program, and then likely do that for Stanford as well. And truly, the intention of doing this is, is to kind of demystify this process. I don't know that MBAs are as valuable as they might have been, quite honestly, at one point in time, um, but for those of you that still see value in them and seek to have them, the my hope is to demystify the process because I didn't come from a family where there were a lot of people before me that had gone into all of this. I was first generation, so I had no concept of how to get into these programs, and I always had wished for there to be a place where I could at least hear what a successful MBA essay was and not just have anecdotes about it. Um, yeah, thank you.